On the boat 63, chasing bubbles, we see this weird looking boat. Can you guess what it's for? And we've been walking past this place, well, for a couple of days before we realised it was abandoned. David discovers the source of the bad smell, and I get my scuba gear out to do some work underwater when this happens. Yep, I'm being ultrasounded. Last week, we showed you the alleyway that leads from one side of Volcano Harbour to the other side of Volcano Harbour. Now we've been walking this route for well a couple of days while we were at anchor, and we'd walked past this hotel. It wasn't until we started looking behind the fence, as it were, that we realised it was either abandoned or disused or just fallen into disrepair. All of the swimming pools had water in them, and this was probably the source of the huge great big mosquitoes that were plaguing us in the evenings. When we looked over the fence you could see that there'd been some work done recently but very little. Now while we were at anchor we'd been plagued by this terrible sulphurous smell. David had seen bubbles coming up from the water so he went to find out where they were coming from. Sure enough volcanic gases were coming up from the seabed all around us and this was the source of the smell. He took a GoPro down and tried to film as much as he could. The water's a bit murky here, but you can see the bubbles are coming up from the seabed. Absolutely fascinating. So this is an extract from the video that David took. If you want to see more of this, David and Caroline have got their own, well, little YouTube channel. Now it's just for their family and friends really, but I'm sure they'd like you to go over and take a look at some of their videos. I'll leave a link in the description below. Go and check it out. Amongst the Kiss Me Quick hats and the seashells and postcards, there were these stalls. Now these are selling stones from the volcanic area. That one's iron pyrite or fool's gold. But these things were called bombers. They're hollow and crystalline inside. There's sulphur and pomichi or pumice. Quite interesting really. Now that's a plate the next warmer. evening we went out for a meal, well, pizza and chips, and there was this amazing boat. It's a plate warmer. Somebody had taken the time to build the thing and make it look like a boat. Amazing. Well, we'd kind of just about done the Anonian Islands, and the season's getting on and we wanted to head further south. So, after much to do around volcanoes, it was time for us to head south. To Sicily. And boy, did we get a reception. Just look at the colour of that water. Now that's blue. What a welcome to Sicily. Now this is uh, Kefalu in Sicily. It's the second anchorage we've had in Sicily. Um, we're not allowed to anchor over there by the rocks for some reason. Uh, Dean got chucked out by the harbour master. No reason, just 280 euro fine if you anchor there. But did suggest that we anchor here inside the breakwater. So we are, uh, I guess, 30 metres from the breakwater. And it's deep water, deepish water. Six, seven metres right up to the edge of the breakwater. Um, we've got 25 metres of chain out. We're dug in well. The water is absolutely gorgeous. You see it's clear, blue, I can see the bottom, which is six, seven metres down. Dive the anchor, that's dug in like a tick. That Manson Supreme anchor is just, every type of ground that we've put it in, it's held and it's held well. I'm really impressed. Manson, if you're watching this, this is an endorsement. I don't really make a lot of endorsements. But a brilliant anchor, really pleased with it. 
So a little fishing port over there and last night we wandered up to that white building with the green tops if you can see that behind David and had a couple of beers took the dogs as it was nice and cool in the evening so a little fishing village a little marina a bar that closes at 7.30 in the evening on the on the quayside couldn't believe it we turned up eight of us to have a few beers at quarter past seven and the woman said no we're closing in 15 minutes and promptly shut the door so we went and spent our money elsewhere strange there's a lighthouse up there a rather loud french boat right next to us on charter a lovely french trawler yacht there fantastic lines it's got can't really see it from here but very classic looking shape right time for a cup of tea I'm gonna make a brew so while we were in such a quiet and peaceful anchorage with very clear blue water David had asked would I change his anodes now they probably didn't need changing um, it could have got a few more months out of them perhaps but you never know, you take your opportunities while you can because if one had worn through or come off it would have made an imbalance on the propeller so as he had spare with him I put my scuba gear on and uh, changed them it didn't take very long, there are three anodes on this prop they're held in with an M6 bolt um, cap head screw actually and all you have to do is undo the cap head screw uh, take the anode out and um, replace it now it's not really a difficult job um, in fact it's pretty straightforward so Cindy and David both had GoPros in the water filming what I was doing taking them off is pretty straightforward you can just undo the cap screw as I was working I wanted to show them or indicate to them how many anodes I got off so I pointed with my fingers one two and then three and if I dropped one it didn't really matter well it did it littered the seabed but I managed to keep hold of all of them in one hand while undoing them with the other yeah taking them off went pretty easy David was diving down with the other GoPro and zooming in on what was going on. So he got a clear video of what was going on with his prop. And uh, yeah, that video came out okay, apart from the sound. One of the boats in the anchorage had left their uh, ultrasound depth sounder on and um, well, it completely affected the GoPro. I'll show you some of the footage from the other GoPro in a minute but meanwhile here's me putting back the anodes and you know what they say if anything can go wrong it will go wrong that's Murphy's Law so I had the bolts all ready the anodes have been painted around them to stop them corroding and David comes in for a nice close up and what happens yeek I drop the anode Luckily, it wasn't that d deep, and I had my weight belt on, so I just went down to the seabed below and picked it up. And then came back up again, nice and slowly. Those of you who are scuba divers know you should never come up from that kind of depth faster than the bubbles are rising. So nice and slow, back over to the uh, sail drive, and this time I managed to get it on straight away. So coming up is some of the footage from the other GoPro. Now this one seemed to be affected to a much greater degree than the GoPro that Cindy was using. Both the audio and the video were picking up the depth sounder. Just listen to it.
So while I was down there, I also gave the prop a good clean up. Took off all the barnacles and used some 240 grit pads to clean up all the bronze. And it came up okay in the end, but it's amazing how much growth you get in the southern Mediterranean, even just cruising around. After about an hour underwater, the prop was done, all cleaned and all finished. Now David's got to get down with his snorkeling gear and clean the bottom. Won't take him long, it's just, well, light growth. Here we are on the beach, some kind of uh, canning and jarring processing plant over there. The old tuna wharf is over there. Um, been disused 20 years now that the tuna stocks in the Mediterranean have decimated. A couple of boats anchored out there, and um, how they've got away with it, I don't know. As, uh, we were all told not to go there, would be fined. And this is the boat graveyard on the beach. And lots of boats here just abandoned, not being used. This one's stripped, so its props have been taken off, it's had some damage. All the electronics have been stripped out. Yeah, it's a shame because it's actually it's had a want there, but you know that's repairable. It's a fixer up a project for someone, but it won't be. It will rot. Probably. Even the hatches have been stripped off it. Quite a few others in various states of repair. Right. Let's go and find So at the back of the boatyard is the mountains and the caves. And on the top there's a fortress. And down here is this. Now it's had a bit of a hard life. But this is a real performance monster. I know what it is. Do you know what it is? Put it in the uh, description if you do. A couple of clues. Look at the special keel on it. Yeah, that's a real performance. That's a boat beater. So stick it in the uh, doobly do if you know what um, if you know what boat that is. We've walked up the street, which is famous for its street food. Clearly my boyish good looks from YouTube have been recognised, or maybe not.